G'day there. Thank you very much for tuning in. Now get ready. We have a controversial guest with us in the studio and a lot of people have tried to cancel her. Her name is Kelly Jane Keane, but she's known as Posey Parker. She was described this week as a far-right anti-transgender activist from the UK. She's come to Australia for a series of talks. Before she even got here, there was an attempt to cancel her visa. The Greens MP Stephen Bates wanted her banned. He wrote to the Immigration Minister Andrew Giles saying, This is a prominent transphobe who poses a significant risk to members of the trans and gender diverse community. And there have been petitions to have her talks cancelled. She's with us in the studio right now. I better be careful here because she poses a significant risk. So Posey Parker, the British commentator, welcome to the studio. Thank you so very much. You don't look so scary. No, I'm really small as well, so no, I'm not scary at all. Is it your views that are the scary thing? It's my ability to speak directly and speak the truth. I think that's quite frightening for some people. Why do people get so frightened by what you've got to say? Is it the reality check that you deliver? I think so. I think we've... We've lost the ability, both in the UK and Australia and, and elsewhere, to just speak plainly, just just to speak the truth. Why don't we put to you some of the allegations against you, first of all? I've just said them in the intro. Mm -hmm. Are you a transphobe? In today's money, because a transphobe means that you say a woman doesn't have a penis, mm. then probably I am a transphobe. Are you an anti-transgender activist? I'm a woman's rights activist. How do you define a woman? an adult human female. Why do people in power have trouble saying that? I don't know why. I don't know why they have trouble. Maybe it's social media. Maybe it's the fact that everybody is judged on a minute-by-minute -minute basis and it's really easy to cancel people. But it's only because so many people are complete cowards that this has been able to uh, manifest into a mass silencing tool. Do you have the same thing in the UK where you have people in positions who are asked that simple question, what is a woman, and they they run for the hills, they think, oh, no, I, yeah. I can't possibly answer that. <laughs> I asked the Minister for Women in 2019, what is a woman, at a conference for women to celebrate <laughs> 100 years of women in a, a political party called the Conservative Party, and she wouldn't answer in 2019. All right, I'm going to play a couple of blokes here. Uh, this is Dr Brendan Murphy, who is one of our most experienced medicos in Australia, and he's being asked a question by a Liberal Senator, Alex Antic. Can someone please provide me with a definition of what a woman is? Department of Health, definition of a man, definition of a woman. Professor Murphy. <laughs> there, look, I think there are, there are a variety of definitions, and I, I think a simple perhaps, one. perhaps to give it a more fulsome answer, we should take that on notice. You're going to take on notice yeah. the question of what a woman is. No, well, there, there are a variety. There, it, it's a very, it's a very, uh, it's a very contested space. I mean, you can just hear, can't you? You can hear it. But what's interesting is that if the same question was asked 15, 20 years ago, yeah, you would have got a straight answer. Mm. And I all of a sudden now everyone goes, Whoa, what am I going to say? I know, and it's preposterous. I think there was a, a woman being elected in the United States of America to the Supreme Court, and she was asked a similar question and said it depends on the context. Well, no, it absolutely doesn't. Okay, what about those people who were born male and then they feel like they're trapped in the wrong body and they want to be a female? What do you say to those people? Well, there's plenty of people that feel things that aren't true. We don't, we don't then say that they're a different category of person. Have you so, got any objection to those people identifying the way they want to identify? I have no objection to anybody doing whatever they want in their lives, um, you know, even up to harming themselves if they're a fully grown adult. But that shouldn't impinge upon my life at all. I shouldn't have to. There should be no consequence to me for a man calling himself whatever he wants. Our guest in the studio is Kelly J. Keane, also known as Posey Parker. They've tried to cancel her many times but she's in Sydney at the moment. Why haven't they managed to cancel you? You're still alive and kicking. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea why it's... I've been arrested a few times. I've been interviewed under caution by the police. I was interviewed under caution within the last month uh, for hate speech and public order offences in the UK for saying something nothing violent, nothing hateful. Um, and I had said it with a police officer about two metres away from me at an event in the UK. So they've been trying for some time for the last five years to cancel me. You've had issues in the UK around prisons when it comes to 
jailing people who've done horrific things mm-hmm. and then you've got to work out do we put them in the men's prison or the female prison yeah yeah we have, well that's world over so i think you've got the same issues in australia there's definitely in new zealand um in america they hand out condoms in women's prisons because there are so many women being impregnated by men who call themselves women in women's prisons when it comes to professional sport i can't believe <laughs> that any fair-minded person can't see this point, and I've been making this point on my radio programs here for years, that if you have someone who is born a man, who Mm -hmm. then competes against a woman Mm -hmm. at the professional level, at the Olympic level, that there's going to be an unfair advantage there. But when you say that to people, again, they think, oh, no, you can't possibly say that. Why why are we so scared to talk about that? I don't know. There's a a weird social currency of acceptance, and I think underpinning that is really not caring at all about women because if your first consideration is women in that situation then you're going to say no you're going to say absolutely not of course we don't want a man sort of a, a six foot two bloke who calls himself janet playing against women and potentially breaking their bones of course we don't want that i've got a friend of mine who was saying to me once why do you keep going on about this on the radio it's not a big deal and i said okay well can i show you something so i showed an example mm-hmm. of of a person born a, a man who then wanted to compete against women and I showed video footage of that competition. It was a, a handball game. Right. Right, <laughs> which has been an yeah. Olympic sport before and a Commonwealth game sport before. The moment this lady saw the image, she went, Okay, I can see what you're mm-hmm. talking about. We've seen that on the on the swimming as well, at championships mm-hmm. in the college level in America, yeah. where they line up gold, silver and bronze and you have a look at the person who's getting the gold and you go, that is not fair. That's an unfair yeah. advantage. Yeah. Well, I went to Atlanta where Leah Thomas, uh, William Thomas was swimming, uh, where he is a fully intact male. He's like six foot two. He's he's huge. I've actually seen him in the flesh. He's a really big guy. And he was swimming against women. And the silence in that space of parents watching their girls who've trained their whole lives Mm. given up so much watching that guy jump into the pool and nobody would say a damn word everyone was frightened into silence he was he was getting naked in the changing rooms amongst those girls and he's a heterosexual man um and so i ended up just shouting (laughs) he's a man uh in the and broke the silence in that space but uh i don't know why everybody is pretending because I don't believe anyone really believes it. That's just preposterous. Okay, if it makes Leah Thomas feel better being called Leah rather than William, have mm-hmm. you got an issue calling Leah Leah? <sighs> because I don't. Like I, there are there are issues that I'm passionate about when it comes to people going into prisons. Well, I think that it, it's totally wrong to have someone mm-hmm. born a male going into a female prison. Professional competition and this overreach where we're all made to feel guilty about everything and anything we say or think in this space. But have you got an issue with calling Leah Leah, if that's what Leah wants to be called? I probably didn't when I started upon this journey. But actually, I think there's a lot of thin end of the wedge arguments. And once we start using female language, female names, Mm. uh, pronouns, for example, for men, I think that really does open the door for the rest of it. If we if we were truly... It's not hard to say it, though, is it? Like, you know, before we started this conversation, I was checking with you about what you want to be called because your name is Kelly Jane Keane, but you're known as Posey Parker. So I say, do you want to be Kelly? Do you want to be Posey? Because it's no skin off my nose. Yeah, but then if I said I want to be John, that would probably be a little more (laughs) difficult for you. I'm told that the police are going to be out in force tomorrow (laughs) when you appear. So Posey Parker is appearing tomorrow, Saturday, 12 noon, Victoria Park, City Road at Camperdown. Mm -hmm. The police are going to be out in force. You're a real troublemaker, aren't you? Everywhere you go, trouble follows you, Posey. I know, I'm so influential. Uh, It just comes along. I I do nothing to invite. I I, I mean, I really do nothing to invite. We we have these events. They're called Let Women Speak. They're about enabling women to come out and speak about what's happening to her in a country like this where the state is gaslighting women into pretending they cannot see the truth in front of their eyes and they can't name it. And that's where it gets crazy when they start saying, oh, no, we can't say the maternity ward anymore. (laughs) We can't say breastfeeding, it's chest feeding. Mm. I think that's when the average person out there, whether they're Australian or British, says, hey, come on, 
can we be reasonable here yeah. about how far we take this stuff while also being respectful to people about however they identify. Well, look, uh, good luck tomorrow, Saturday, 12 noon, Victoria Park, City Road in Camperdown. Posey Parker will be there and the police will be out in force as well. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you so much for having me. Posey Parker, in town from the UK, here in the 2GB studios. This is Ben Fordham, Friday morning, right here on 2GB.